What's got eight legs, can survive at the bottom of the ocean, has been to space, and lives in your backyard? That's right, it's Bean. Today's episode is all about our favorite celebrity invertebrate, the ever effervescent tardigrade. Tardigrades are a part of the phylum Tardigrada and the clade Tactopata, which also includes the phylum Arthropoda, which are essentially every bug you've ever encountered. Phylums usually contain a very wide variety of creatures that can oftentimes share no immediately discernible traits with one another, while Arthropoda includes everything from crabs to spiders to fruit flies and centipedes, tardigrades have a whole branch of evolution all to themselves. These little invertebrates are composed of five body segments, with four trunk segments that each support a pair of legs that end with claws or little fingers. The first three sets of legs are what tardigrades use for movement, while the last set is used primarily for grasping a substance and other matter. There are over 1,300 different species of tardigrades, comprising three main classes. Eutardigrada, Mesotardigrada, and Heterotardigrada. There are differences between the three classes, but the one with the most diversity and most significant visual differences is Heterotardigrada, who have thick dentate plates covering their backs. Oh, what? They're like little armored bears. <laughs> exactly. German zoologist Johann August Ephraim Goes first described tardigrades and named them water bears because they are very commonly found in moist environments and because of their resemblance to obviously, bears. They're also occasionally referred to as moss piglets, for the exact same reasons. Their name, tardigrada, means slow walkers, which was given to them by Italian biologist Lazzaro Spallanzani. Typically, tardigrades grow to a range between half a millimeter to a millimeter long. So while it's possible to see a tardigrade with the naked eye, it would be like trying to read a book that's sitting on the other side of a hockey rink. So if you want to find them on your own, you're going to need a microscope. Finding a tardigrade isn't actually all that hard. Tardigrades are so prolific that you can find them all over the world. They make their homes in three basic environments, salt water, fresh water, and land. No matter where you find them, they will always be surrounded by water. If you want to find these little guys in your own backyard, a patch of wet moss is the best place to look. Simply take a small patch of moss, place it in a small dish, ideally a petri dish, and soak it with water. Once the moss is thoroughly wet, wring out the water in the moss into another dish, and then take a look at it under a microscope. And while you may not spot a moss piggy on your first try, don't lose hope. It might take you a few tries to catch one. Wow! Bro, bro, do you have a, do you have a microscope? There's one under my bed. Go nuts. Oh, okay. I'll be right back. The fascinating thing about tardigrades is that they have a sort of celebrity status among invertebrates for being nigh indestructible or even immortal. But that's not entirely true. It's more accurate to say that they're better adapted to surviving inhospitable environments that would easily kill a human being. Tardigrades can survive temperatures as low as negative 20 degrees for decades. Some have even been seen to survive environments as high as 150 degrees Celsius and as cold as negative 272 degrees Celsius for a few minutes. Which is absolutely off the wall bonkers if you consider that absolute zero, a theoretical temperature that could only be achieved by the existential heat death of the entire universe is only 1.15 degrees colder than that. Tardigrades accomplish this by going into what's called a tun state, a form of hibernation in which they dehydrate to almost 0% water and slow their metabolism to 0.01% of normal. In this form, tardigrades replace the water content in their cells with a sugar mixture called tardigrade-specific intrinsically disordered proteins, or tudipus, which is a bunch of fancy words that mean a substance that tardigrades use to survive stuff but we're not entirely sure how it works. All we need to know is that in a ton state, using TDP, tardigrades can survive without water for up to a decade. Pressure is equal to 6,000 atmospheres, which is six times stronger than the lowest point in the ocean, and up to a thousand rays of gamma radiation, of which mammals can only survive five. Researchers are fascinated by these creatures and their survival skills because they may hold secrets to how life might travel through this universe. 
In 2007, the European Space Agency sent samples of Tun State tardigrades into low Earth orbit and exposed them to the vacuum of space and two different levels of solar radiation. Of the samples sent up on the Photon M3 mission, a vacuum had barely any impact on their survivability. However, exposure to unbridled solar radiation significantly reduced the viability of revival after returning to the shuttle. That isn't to say, however, that exposure to solar radiation killed all of them. In fact, 68% of tardigrades exposed to UVA and UVB radiation revived themselves within 30 minutes of returning. This was groundbreaking, since it made many theories of how life came to be on Earth plausible. Not to mention that many of the tardigrades exposed to space laid eggs while still in a vacuum. Tardigrades, theoretically, could hide inside asteroids, survive descent through an atmosphere, in addition to impact on an alien planet, and begin reproducing immediately, jumpstarting life on an otherwise barren planet. Could they survive on Mount Everest? Yes. The bottom of the ocean? Yes. Forest fire? Yes. Antarctica? Yes. What about the sun? No. The sun is just a billion nuclear bomb blasts going off all at once, all the time. Nothing can survive that. Tardigrades have not adapted to live in extreme environments, so they're not technically extremophiles. They're just very good at surviving rapid changes in their habitats. The longer they're exposed to extreme environments, the less likely they'll survive it. Their abilities, nonetheless, may prove useful to climate researchers like Dr. Thomas Boothby, PhD, assistant professor at the University of Wyoming, who specializes in biochemistry and mechanisms of extremotolerant organisms. He writes that if we can understand the nuances of tardigrade survivability, we could apply this knowledge to help us stabilize vaccines or to develop stress-tolerant crops that can cope with Earth's changing climate. He continues, arguing that we could also use this knowledge to help protect astronauts from the limits of the human body on prolonged missions into space. As we saw earlier, tardigrades are also especially resilient to radiation's effect on cellular DNA. Tekikazu Kaneda, a molecular biologist at the University of Tokyo, says that tolerance against X-ray is thought to be a side product of the animal's adaptation to severe dehydration. And this, if it's possible to implement the same adaptation in humans, could offer safer conditions for workers cleaning up radiation leaks in nuclear reactors. In addition to that, the ways that tardigrades safeguard their DNA from damage could benefit those undergoing radiation therapy and other cancer treatments. Understanding the way he keeps his DNA protected could one day be used to help treat cancer. So much of this world is hidden to us in the nooks and crannies of the microscope. From tardigrades like Bean to deadly single-celled eukaryotes, there are entire universes filled with fantastic and beautiful creatures hidden just out of our sight. It's just up to us to go out there and find them. Bro, Grill, I, I grab all the moss from the backyard and, and let's see if we can find Bean a friend. Well, these guys are so small. Why, why is Bean so thick? Well, that's proprietary information of the hillside. Oh, is it 345 already? That's right, and that means it's time for your daily, daily wellness, wellness checkup. checkup. Super. All right, send me your internet quiz. Are those air horns? Oh yes, the care horns. Scientifically chosen, you know. We found it beneficial to. Yeah, they play until you answer. Believe me, saved you an hour-long explanation. Whoa! Th how did you coordinate this, Brayden? And and how are you taking over Bruce's computer? Computer theft is a serious crime, Brendan. Brayden, thank you very much. And unlike some of you, the mad lads have been keeping organized. Oh, is that a new hairstyle, Brayden? Oh no, <laughs> but it does look dashing, doesn't it? Well, here we go. He was totally driving the right. SUV down the wrong side. You can't love anyone no until you learn to love yourself. Crazy. Whoa, 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 lads, lads.